when will the USA win the World Cup? I'm sure that's a question that might have popped in some of your minds, considering the importance of the United States on a global scale. Whether you love them, hate them, or simply don't care about them, the fact of the matter is that everything that you see in the current Western society stems from the US. So it's kinda weird that they aren't that relevant when it comes to the most watched tournament in the world. I know that they have their own unique sport culture, and that usually serves as an excuse for why they don't do that well in the World Cup. But on the other hand, they have a concrete mentality that should force them to win the World Cup. But when? I wasn't satisfied with the biased answers that I found online, so I made my own historical research and I can say with confidence that I can pinpoint exactly the year the USA will finally lift their first World Cup. Well, at least more accurately than anything you'll ever find online. I know that you don't believe me now, but in the end, it will all make sense. For starters, let's kick the obvious out of the way. This generation of Pulisic, McKennie, Reyna and company are not winning the World Cup. They might make it past the group stage in their next three World Cups, but that's really about it. I know Americans think their current prospects are like the LeBron James of football, but they're really not. They're like a Tari Eason at best. So we can pretty much forget about any iconic triumphs, at least until 2034. Now in 2038, that's where things get interesting. By that point, the generation that grew up with phones glued to their eyes will be the stars on the field. Many of them had spent their youth watching YouTube shorts, so it's more than likely that they weren't that heavily influenced by the North American sport culture. More American kids than ever before fell in love with football due to several reasons. Having a World Cup in their own country, a decent USA run in a future tournament, the fact that their country will be the undisputed top dog in a continent considering the giant mess of a situation in which Mexican football is in, and perhaps the most important reason, Lionel f***ing Messi. I think we're yet to see the best of Messi in the MLS. In 2024 and 2025, La Pulga will still be able to put on stunning performances and as a consequence, more eyes on the product. Not only that, but he'll continue to impact the league far beyond the date of his retirement as I'm sure he'll be a prevalent figure through special appearances or even through owning a different franchise, which will put the MLS at least at the current league on level. With better infrastructures, better coaching, a competitive league and a greater amount of talent, that generation of kids born from 2010 until 2020 will solidify the USA as a solid football side that could consistently make deep runs in the World Cup. But do you really think they'll win the whole thing? Are the European, South American and even Asian countries like Saudi Arabia and Japan freeze frame and let the US become the top dogs in the world? Of course not. I said they'll be better and have deep runs in the World Cup, perhaps even reaching the semis, but that's really about it. If you look at our current top teams, France, Spain, Argentina, etc, they all had to fail time and time again to reach a pinnacle of the sport. Spain were seen as top candidates for years before they truly reached the absolute peak level in 2010. Besides, let's not forget the huge cost to play in a youth academy in the US. Parents will pay thousands of dollars a year for their kids' academy tuition. That factor eliminates millions of talented kids out of the equation, which will put a cap on the USA's potential. So from 2038 until 2046, the USA will make a lot of progress, but ultimately they'll still fall short of World Cup glory. However, those good performances plus the complete globalization of football around the 2040s should at least guarantee that the American kids will no longer have to pay that much to play in a football academy, which in turn will give the US a massive advantage. If they were able to be competitive with just a small fraction of their youth playing football, imagine when the more athletic but not so wealthy kids get a chance to develop their game. From that moment on, it's pretty much over for the rest of us. Those kids born from 2030 until 2040 will form a golden generation of players and unless something major also happens in another country, they'll be very hard to stop. They'll have everything, the talent, the experience from past mistakes and at that point, they'll just need to have luck on their side. And that lucky factor will come in the form of a massive overall in football, as the 2050 World Cup will most likely mark an end of an era for the beloved tournament. Since the beginning of the 2020s, Gianni Infantino and Arsène Wenger have been pushing for a World Cup to be held every two years. The Asian and African football federations are obviously in favor of it, but UEFA is fighting tooth and nail to avoid it. 
From a numbers point of view, the Europeans are outnumbered, but UEFA has a massive influence in the footballing world. After all, like it or not, they're the center of the sport and the ones who generate the most revenue. Or at least they were in the 2020s. Fast for 30 years and many other confederations will be making almost as much as UEFA. It's a certain that they'll eventually give in, and with World Cups played every two years with shorter qualifying stages, the tournament's paradigm will change completely. The most obvious change will be in the qualifiers, as it's literally impossible to have the current small league system that we have nowadays. Countries will have to play less qualification matches, perhaps in knockout rounds, resulting in a much smaller margin for error. The USA will have a much easier time qualifying to the World Cup compared to the European giants, as there's no way the CONCACAF minnows will pose a bigger threat than C-tier European nations. With a bigger frequency of tournaments and an easier qualification path, I can predict that the USA will win their first tournament the next time they host a World Cup, which going by the current hosting cycle, should happen in 2054. At the end of the day, this is highly speculative. I'm completely aware that it's almost impossible to accurately predict the future, but at the same time, the evolution of a country's football quality tends to happen more or less in a patterned way. From the moment they start putting a serious effort in becoming the best in the world, and considering they never give up, the average nation usually takes about 40 to 60 years to reach their goal. Real Madrid's dominance at club level in the late 50s and early 60s were the baby steps necessary for Spanish football to achieve complete dominance in the late 2000s and early 2010s. France's first goal generation during the 1950s were the trailblazers that kick-started the revolution that only truly came to fruition in 1998. Argentina made it to their first World Cup final in 1930, but it would only win it for the first time in 1978, and it would only cement their legacy later in the next decade. Portugal's bronze medal in their World Cup debut in 1966 and Mifika's rise to dominance in that same decade would only materialize into goal in 2016. I think you get my point. The USA wanted to develop football since the 70s, but they only made a true sustained statement by forming the MLS in 1993 and by hosting a World Cup in the next year. Considering the expected evolution of football while paying attention to the past development of the top nations in our sport, I think my prediction is probably the most accurate you'll find online. And now, I want to hear your opinion. When do you think the USA will win their first World Cup? Feel free to pinpoint any disagreements that you might have with my prediction so we can start the discussion. Leave a like if you want to watch more content like this and subscribe to never miss the most interesting football discussions, stories and top 10 lists. Thank you for watching until the end, I appreciate you and I will see you soon.